It's called the it, it's called the Karpman drama triangle. Karpman drama triangle. It's a rescuer, abuser, and victim. Karpman says that the roles change all the time. They shift. So a victim could become an abuser. Abuser can become rescuer, and so on and so forth. He said that the roles are not are not fixed. But yeah. Yeah, you have these uh, you have these uh, saviors, uh, healers, fixers, rescuer types, and they are actually mostly narcissistic. They're very grandiose. They're covert, so you can't see them coming. They hide behind a facade of empathy and compassion and altruism and charity and helpfulness and succor, and they're the most wonderful people on earth, and they're saintly almost, you know. But actually, behind the facade, there's a predator, a dangerous predator, who has no boundaries, is unbounded, and who has no moral compunction and no moral compass. A predator who would do anything, like anything, totally antisocial. I have, <laughs> look, I've been, I've been 26 years in this racket, so of course I've seen, I've seen quite a few. Actually, I had, I had one. I had one in my life until recently. The son is uh, playing tricks on us. He was a guy I, I uh, used to hang out with, and uh, we broke up uh, after an incredible incident of egregious bedmouthing and backstabbing. So a lot of what I say in this video, in this uh, interview, it's based on his on this rotten character, you know. So, saviors are very often perfidious, fake friends. Many of them are people pleasers, actually. <clears throat> they always claim to be helpless and defenseless. Victim stunts, you know, they're always victims of manipulation and abuse. And they're so childlike in their, in their vulnerability and so in need, oh, so in need of love. And of course, women, lap it up they lap it up they love it they, they they see a love deficit and they just want to plug in and fulfill it and that is that is the secret source of uh, saviors and rescuers because remember as i said saviors healers fixers rescuers they're grandiose they're covert they're fake and they're definitely predatory they often move around in, in couples, like the, the savior rescuer type would team up with someone who is a lot less fake, someone who is honest, straightforward, no nonsense, doesn't do sweet talk, never pretends, and never lies. And so, in comparison to this backdrop, in comparison to this wingman, the savior or the rescuer appears to be empathic, compassionate, altruistic, loving, caring, even saintly. It's this contrast. They create this contrast. It's a problem. It's a problem because you can't see them coming. These savior rescuer types, like this guy that I mentioned, they're, they're snakes in the grass. They masquerade as good people, but they actually engage all the time in perfidy and betrayal and backstabbing and bedmouthing and, and so on. Because to pose as a savior or to pose as a rescuer, you have to cast someone as, a, as an abuser. You, you can't be a savior if there's no abuser. So they go around labeling people, abusers and, and so on and so forth. They, but in reality, uh, most of these saviors and rescuers, who are usually men, they're rapidly misogynistic. Some of them, I think, are latent homosexuals or closet gays. They're narcissistic, and and they're psychopathic in in the on the dating scene, for example. They're players, actually. Most of them are players, and the pickup line of these people is, "I am a savior of damsels in distress." They're self-appointed, of course, and the, their saving and rescuing is self-imputed. It's nonsense and bullshit. It disguises predatory practices. But they go around 
picking up vulnerable, heartbroken, sad, crying women and telling them, I'm going to save you from the bad, mentally ill, dangerous, damaging abuser that you're with. I'm the alternative to the horrors of your relationship. But often, as Cartman correctly observes, it is the saved savior who is the abuser, not the so-called abuser. Cartman says that these roles are not fixed. They crucially depend on play acting, circumstances, interpersonal dynamics, and so on and so forth. So very often saviors and rescuers are predators and abusers masquerading as saviors and rescuers. So they go, they go to venues where you can find such women. I don't know, bars, dating apps, restaurants, but they home in, they zero in on, on, on heartbroken, sad, damaged, crying, devastated, anxious and depressed women as targets wherever they may be. It could be a dinner. It could be an intimate dinner with friends. This happened to me. This savior type, he picked up a, a girl uh, at a dinner, you know. They, th these women need to talk, they need to share, they can't be alone, they, they, can't, they can't face being alone immediately, for example, after a breakup or after a big fight with a partner. They can't face being alone, they just need to talk, but they end up being prey, sexual or otherwise. The, the savior or the rescuer just stigmatizes and labels someone as an abuser. They just pick up any guy and they would, they would label him an abuser. It often is actually a friend or a colleague because these are the easiest, most available targets. So they would go around, they would talk to your, they would pretend to be your friend and then they would talk to your wife or to your girlfriend and they would convince her that you're an abuser and they can save her. They're fake friends. They are seething with envy and resentment owing to deep set inferiority complex. Saving, rescuing this operation makes them feel omnipotent, makes, empowers them. You know, they feel godlike. They are, they, it's mythical. It's almost, almost mythological. It's almost like King Arthur legends, you know, they, they are the knight on shining armor and they are saving uh, damsels in distress from the monsters that lurk in relationships. The, the abuser could be anyone, that's what I'm telling you. That's not the point. Of course, some women are subjected to abuse in relationships, but the savior and rescuer is a predator, is not really interested in the woman or in her relationship, or, or in her woes, or in the problems that she's having, or in her state of mind, or in the abuser. They couldn't care less. They hate women. Most of them absolutely detest women and hold them in deep contempt. They want to hurt women. They are dangerous, sadistic predators. They're rabid misogynists, I, I, as I told you. So they bad mouth. Even if you are best friend with them, they badmouth you. They betray your confidences for hours to other people. And of course, being grandiose, they don't realize that their words are reported back to the so-called abuser. For example, this guy and me, um, I had information from multiple sources about how he's badmouthing me and egregiously backstabbing me. I would introduce him to women and then he would take them aside or fix an appointment with them or have, you know, a date with them. And he would go on and on and on for hours, bed mouthing me, trying to convince them to not be with me. But I refused to believe it because he was that good at faking. He's a consummate fake. He's been fake, fake all his life, I assume. He had to be fake to survive, you know. Saviors and rescuers attempt to create alliances or coalitions with victims against abusers. But often the abuser is actually not an abuser. So that's what I said. For example, there's a fight. There's a fight. A couple has a fight. 
the savior would plug himself in and convince the woman that she's being abused or there's a breakup hours after the breakup the savior would date that woman and sleep with her that's the pattern i call it the the uh, the predator the three the predatory three s's S i'm gonna save you i'm gonna have sex with you and then i'm gonna scram and i'm gonna scram pretending to be altruistic so like save sex scram the three s's of the predatory savior and rescuer i'm gonna i'm gonna pretend to save you i'm gonna be your friend I'm going to be your shelter and refuge and sanctuary and respite. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to listen to you for hours. And you can cry on my shoulder. I'm going to understand you and accept you. I'm going to calm you down, ameliorate your anxiety and everything. All this in order to end up having sex with you. And then once I've had sex with you and aroused your sympathy and so on, there's a connection. I will scram. I just run away. And I will tell you, you don't need another fantasy or you're not ready for a relationship or such other bullshit like this. This is what rescuers and savior types do. It's a highly narcissistic behavior. It's selfish. It's egotistical. It's predatory. It's exploitative. It's horrible because it leaves the victim of abuse. If she is indeed a victim of abuse, it leaves her much more broken than before. It leaves her even more devastated. She feels used and re-traumatized second time. Depends if they're narcissistic. Yeah. Yeah. If they're narcissistic, yes, they believe their own lies. They believe they have this fantasy of themselves. It's a grandiose fantasy of themselves as saviors and rescuers, and, and they believe their own lies and confabulations. It is their job, so to speak, self-assigned mission in life to save women from men. They, it's splitting. They choose a target, let's say a, a good, good friend, a colleague, a neighbor. They choose a target. They make the target all bad or all black, an abuser, and then by comparison, they're all good, and that is splitting. It caters to their grandiosity, but they have unbounded sexual needs. They don't recognize, they have no moral compass. They have no moral compass. They would sleep, they would poach your wife, they would poach your girlfriend, they would do anything. They don't care. They absolutely, there's no boundaries, no guiding behavior, no codes, no nothing. They are utter unmitigated, feral, savage predators. Yes, I think I can generalize and say that all, I mean, everything I've just said is based on this character, this guy uh, in my life, but I've seen others, of course, in action. And yes, I can generalize and say that all savior, rescuer types are like that. They are like that, absolutely. No, he is not, no, he is not. And ex and it, no, he is not an exception, and it's not because I'm angry at him. I am angry at him, but it's not. Um, I'm sufficiently detached. Yes, this is the profile of a rescuer savior, and any woman who has gone through this cycle will confirm what I'm saying. Any woman, ask anyone who has had this triangle of abuser, rescuer, savior. Ask her what the rescuer savior, self-appointed rescuer savior, ask her what he did to her. Did he or did he not have sex with her hours after she appealed for help? For example. Yeah, we can, we can move on <laughs> to the next uh, topic. Absolutely. But I still, I still want to say a few things. But it's not about him. It's about this phenomenon of narcissistic saviors, narcissistic rescuers, narcissistic healers and fixers, narcissistic gurus, narcissistic coaches. Narcissists are everywhere. They have taken over the helping professions. They are among therapists as well. It's very dangerous what's happening. 
because narcissists and psychopaths infiltrated victimhood movements, self-help activities, forums online, and they're all over the place and they are in control of the agenda. That's not me. These are studies in British Columbia in 2020, studies by Gabay, G-A-B-E-P-B-A-Y. These studies clearly show that clearly show that victimhood movements, um, self-help self -help movements are being infiltrated by narcissists and psychopaths, especially covert narcissists. Covert narcissists are the most dangerous in this sense, because again, you can't see them coming. And when they strike, it's sudden, it's disorienting, it's disconcerting, it's destructive. It's a horrible experience. I can tell you from personal experience the last few weeks. <laughs> It's an absolutely horrible experience because the sense of betrayal is profound. You want to believe in the good of other people. You know, you want to believe that the world is good, that people essentially are good. And so it's a betrayal not only of you, but a betrayal of kind of cosmic justice or a betrayal of the order of the world. It's, it's destabilizing and unsettling and terrifying in many respects. It's like everything is up, upended. You, you, can, you lose your ability to trust in people after something like this. So these predatory rescuers who end up having sex with vulnerable, broken people, who end up abusing and exploiting people, you know, they are, they are dangerous. They are much more dangerous than overt, open abusers. Um, they are much more dangerous than in your face, uh, my way or the highway, narcissists and psychopaths. Because you can defend yourself if you know that someone is a narcissist or someone, you can protect yourself if someone is a psychopath. You, if, you, if you have the, the, the accurate information, you're safe. But what do you do against people who pretend to be, who pretend to be good people, empathic people, helpful, fake, fake the willingness to help just in order then to kind of prey on you what do you do with such people? As a friend, as a, as a lover, as a spouse, what do you do with such people? That's the issue. And there's no good answer to this. There's no good answer to this because our current civilization enables such people. It gives them access to all kinds of technologies, empowering technologies. And so their reach is much wider than ever before. So danger cannot be overestimated. I, I 